municipalities are out. So now I want to talk a little bit about the animals in the tank. We'll talk about what species are in here. You'll start to see some uh, some of the corals from the coral farm, the mother colonies that came from. Not all of them, but some of them are from here. Many of them are from this tank. And I'll just go around. And we'll point out uh, some of the coral colonies. And but before I get into that, what I want you to know about the tank is it's about let's see, its history. It's about five years old, and uh, about three quarters of the corals that are in the tank were aquaculture corals, and all of them started off uh, smaller than about a fist size uh, coral, so a little bit smaller than that, like a, smaller than a baseball. And uh, we'll go through and point out some uh, corals. Um, and one last thing before I do that is we'll talk a little bit about fish. So I like to keep lots of fish in the tank, and um, if I had more money, we would have even more fish in the tank than there are now, if you want to pan over. Um, now we've been messing with the lighting. It's late at night here. Some of the fish are a little confused. They went to sleep. They turn the lights back on, and some of them will come out. Um, the antheas, a lot of the antheas are hiding right now, so we can't see many of them. Um, but I like to have a lot of fish in here. And one of the ways that I like to set up a tank is I don't like to add a lot of fish. So when we set up the tank, we put in a lot of the tanks first. Uh, then we put in some of the worker fishes other than the tanks like the, the sifter gobies um, or the copper banded. And the last fish to go in are the ones that really don't perform a function for cleaning the tank like the antheas and the chromis or the dwarf angels or the cardinal fishes. They're obligate plankton eaters and those are fish that all require a lot of food going in the tank. And so we put them in last because they cause the most pollution. And one last thing before we move on to corals is that the fish, uh, for example, we've got a bunch of uh, blue hippo tanks in here and they fight all the time. Uh, so do the convict tanks. I don't know who fights more. Um, but the convict tanks will chase each other around, throw water out of the tank on our heads. Uh, we have a, we have a, uh, or excuse me, I said convict, I mean the hippo tanks, the blue hippo tanks. We have a blue hippo tank in the sump, in the, in the refugium, because it was getting its butt kicked, and we had to pull it out. And uh, that's the second one we pulled out. There was another one that we pulled out, and we uh, surplus that fish, uh, sold that to a hobbyist. So one of the keys is to have it a bunch of tanks, especially the same species, is stocking them in different sizes. I kind of equate it like, like a classroom. If you put in one 250 pound kid in the classroom, one huge kid, and then you have a couple of kids that are much smaller than him, and then a bunch that are, that are very small, they don't have to fight as much to figure out and establish dominance. And the less fighting, the less stress, and the less stress, the less likelihood for disease, and it tends to work better. It's not perfect. I make plenty of mistakes, and the fish don't read the books. <laughs> so, um, again, five years ago, we stocked the tank, and uh, we had, I think, one really large hippo, uh, one or two, like, medium-sized one, and a bunch of small ones. Well, after five years, they're all pretty close to the same size, and they fight all the time and they heal all the time. And the main reason why no one's getting sick in this tank, aside from minimizing stress, is this thing over here. UV sterilizer. I'm a big proponent of UV sterilizers because they kill fish parasites, fish parasite larvae when they're hatching, and they prevent a major bloom from happening in the tank. So, if you have a chance to come here, any one time, like right now, I can see small versions of parasites or we call it disease on a fish, but everybody's happy and healthy and strong and vibrant. So it's about minimizing stress and having insurance like a UV sterilizer that's properly sized, oversized, to prevent any kind of disease outbreak from blooming and wiping out a tank. Next, we're going to go on to corals. 